Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be doing my summer TBR. I am so excited. I am so excited for summer. You guys don't even understand. I love summer. I'm a summer girly. I come alive in the heat, in the sun. I love I love it. So I am so excited for summer and I've got so many exciting videos coming. I'm feeling really excited with all the videos I'm making at the moment. And so I thought let's do a summer TBR. I wasn't gonna do one. Usually I do do like a little TBR for every season to give you a little teaser of some of the books I'm gonna be reading in the next couple months, some of the videos I'm gonna be doing. But I wasn't gonna do it in summer and then I saw everyone else doing their summer TBRs and I felt jealous. <laughs> We have to do it. So the way that I do my TBRs, because obviously I have a lot of videos planned, right? So I do five books that I have got plans to be reading that I'm going to be reading in the next couple of months. And then I do five books that I have no plans to read, but I really want to. <laughs> Wishful thinking. Yeah. You're a dreamer. You dream a lot in your no, no. So it's like half solid and half aspirational. I've got a lot of videos coming in the next couple months where I currently don't know what I'm gonna be reading, where I'm gonna be finding out in the moment what I'm gonna be reading. So those books will be good for that. I'm increasingly feeling like there's not enough days in the year, not enough hours in the day to read all the books that I wanna read. Like, it's a problem. I wish I could read 10,000 books, like right now. <laughs> We can't. So shall we just get into the list? First, we are going to go for Yellow Face by Rebecca F. Kwong. Her name's Rebecca on this one, so I'm going to call her Rebecca. I feel like they're trying to distinguish between her fantasy and non-fantasy stuff. But um, yeah, I just, I need to read it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I went to the talk for this in London and it's just made me even more excited. So the plot of this, I'm sure you've heard about it already. We're following two characters at the start. One is a white struggling author. Another is an Asian, incredibly popular, like doing really well author. And they're kind of frenemies. And one evening I think they're having dinner together and the Asian author like chokes and dies <laughs> in a freak accident. And the white author decides I'm gonna steal the manuscript she was working on pass myself off as racially ambiguous and like publish this book. And this is basically like a satire around publishing and the situation in publishing, you know. Publishing is a thing, right? When Black Lives Matter happened and there was movements such as publishing paid me, if a lot of you don't know, but I actually did for my like, I did journalism um, as my degree at uni and in that instead of writing a dissertation as like our final project we made a documentary and my documentary was about the hashtag publishing paid me that sprang up a couple years ago talking about how authors of colour traditionally were paid less for their advance advances and found it more difficult to get published than white authors. So that's why I did my documentary and I've never shared it publicly because A, the people that I interviewed, I interviewed some authors who were kind of surrounding the hashtag and I interviewed like people from publishing and stuff. I didn't ask if I could put it on YouTube, I just said it's going to be viewed by my uni professors. So that's really the main reason I've never shared it, but I was very proud of it and I really got deep into the subject and it's in my opinion. My opinion, my opinion, publishing would say it's not, but um, I think the whole situation sucks. There is so much like ingrained racism in all of our structures in life, I believe. And publishing, you know, tried to set up some imprints, tried to hire more diverse editors at that time, but I'm hearing a lot of those imprints and editors have gone. <laughs> so it's not great. And so I'm really, really excited to read this. And I think that it's, I mean, just everything that she does is incredible and is intentional. And I just love her. <laughs> I just love Rebecca. So I'm really excited that I've got plans to read this. Like I'm currently having to hold myself back because I can't, wait. Let's alternate between ones I do have plans for and ones I don't. So one that I don't have a plans for but I really want to get to is Murder Before Even Song by Reverend Richard Coles. So I got this last year but I really want to read it because I just bought the sequel. <laughs> bling bling bling! Bitches is mad! <laughs> Look at the little doggies! How cute is that? Yeah I got the sequel because I want like matching editions basically. <laughs> This one's like red spread ages and this one has the doggies, but I really want to start this murder mystery series. So um, it's just like a quaint murder mystery series following a reverend and murders happening in the town that he lives in. And I watched, um, what was it? What was it that I heard Richard Coles? He's like a semi-celebrity in the UK. Not semi, he is a celebrity, but not like an A-list, you know? Oh, it was the Waterstones podcast he was on with Janice Hallett and, and um, what's her name? <laughs> Nita Prose, they were on like an episode about mysteries and he spoke about how he really likes having a reverend as his main character because reverends can kind of like get into 
places other people can't, can't. Like people let them into their homes and tell them things that they wouldn't tell someone else. So I'm really excited and I would really like to start this. I think it's gonna be like a quick fun read, you know? I mean, look, it's got like a cute little map. Like, come on, it's fun. So I'm excited to read this one. Then I also have decided I am gonna be reading The Writing Retreat. I think I'm gonna choose this as one of my books for Summerween. One of the prompts is read a thriller. And this is one of the thrillers that I'm most excited for. I am gonna be vlogging Summerween. I'm very excited. I've never done it before. I'm not the best at <laughs> doing readathons because I always have other videos to do, but I'm gonna vlog Summerween and I'm really, really excited for it. So I think we're gonna read this in Summerween. I've spoken about this a ton <laughs> already. I put it in five star predictions or if you told me I was absolutely batshit insane for doing that but I trust my instincts I'm gonna love it you guys I've just decided I'm gonna love it no it's true no oh, it's true we're following these characters who go to this writing retreat and I think there's a prize for what you write there and I know it's also about like female friendships it goes crazy I know this book goes crazy but I'm so excited to read it one of the most exciting books on my TBR right now and I'm just so ready to read it this summer I'm like beyond ready I'm like I was made for this I was made for this. <laughs> then one I don't have plans to read but really want to is Throwback by Maureen Goo. This was recommended to me by Courtney Summers when we chatted for the video that we made. And I'm just so excited to read it. She recommended it to me. It's about a girl and her mum and the girl ends up going back in time to the 90s alongside her 17 year old mum basically. And it's like set in the 90s. And I'm just, ex I'm really excited. A, I think this kind of straddles like, it'll give me some like YA contemporary vibes to it, I believe but kind of the cover gives me those vibes, which I feel like I've been lacking a bit and I feel like it's something I really love reading in summer because it's just fun, it's quick, it's enjoyable, but also it's doing something different. It's got like a sci-fi twist to it. And I, I mean, listen, I loved Seventeen again. I loved Seventeen again as a kid. And yes, it is a bit different because that's like, an older guy becoming 17 again in our time. But like, this is her going back to the 90s and her mum younger is there. But like, it's kind of giving some of the vibes. And I love, Zac Efron's Supremacy. Guys, I was just, I was looking on Twitter the other day. And when you think back to how incredible the High School Musical movies were, like, just think about it. I'm gonna be watching it with my patrons this weekend for our movie night, I think. I think it's gonna win the poll. I put it on there because I was like, I'm pretty sure that's gonna win and I just really wanna watch High School Musical again. So that's what's happening. But just think about like the choreography Oh my god, Scream, Scream in High School Musical 3 with the twisting, I mean, cinematic genius, guys. High School Musical, my god. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular. Then another book I do have plans to read. I'm finally gonna be reading I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. This is a non-fiction I have wanted to read for so long. We're following this woman's path into finding this serial killer. And I believe she did actually find out who it was, but then she passed away, I think maybe before it was confirmed. But yeah, this is like her book detailing her journey into finding out who this guy was. And I have, you know, I don't wanna say I love true crime because I think true crime, our relationship with it should be examined. Our relationship with like women as victims and idealizing people who do terrible things in true crime and like our fascination with it as humans. Like I think it should be something that you're conscious of when you're consuming true crime kind of material, but it is something that I do find interesting. And so reading from this kind of perspective where this woman worked really, really hard to find out this person who had done terrible things, I think is an angle that I would be really interested in reading. So yeah, I've always heard such wonderful things about this. It's got like pictures as well, I think of victims and yeah, I'm really, really excited to get into this because for years I have heard wonderful things and it's time to read it. Then one I currently don't have plans to read, but I'm hoping I'm gonna read sometime soon is The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. It is currently wrapped up behind me. Wrapped up is coming to an end next month. So if I don't end up reading it in wrapped up, which I think is pretty unlikely, um, I will probably hopefully read it in another vlog. But yeah, I can't really remember what this one's about. I know it was Ashley Winstead's release last year. By the way, she publishes like a romance and a thriller every single year. This woman's insane. I really enjoyed it in my dreams of holding life. It was fun. It was like witty. It, I really, really enjoyed it. And I've heard really good things about The Last Housewife, but I've also heard it's quite different. Particularly, I think it's a bit raunchy. It's a bit raunchy. <laughs> Being a bit saucy. I literally can't remember the plot. Something about housewives. <laughs> Can't remember, but it's Ashley Winstead and Ashley Winstead is becoming an author that I want to read all of her books and the cover's fucking amazing. So like, we're gonna read it. I'm very excited. It's one of those books, like I don't even need to know anything about it to know that it might be a five star. 
I think it's gonna be at least a four. Then another one I do have plans to read is In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. Look at her. Look at her, I am nervous, right? So this is TJ Klune's next book and I've given House in the Cerulean Sea and Under the Whispering Door five stars from him. And I'm nervous because I've heard mixed things about this one. We've got like this family of puppets slash robots like living in secrecy, but then someone else their location, one of them gets taken away and then they kind of go on this quest, I think, to save their family member. And I think it's gonna be a lot about family. There's always like, a through line in TJ Klune's books of like uh, teaching, not necessarily teaching, but like holding a light up to humanity in some aspect. And I'm suspecting this could be family. I've heard mixed things. Some people have told me that they loved it. Some people have told me they didn't think it's as successful as his previous two, but I'm really excited. I think he always has a very interesting perspective in his books and I always have a great time reading them. So even if it's not five star, I'm not putting five star pressure on it because I have heard mixed things. I'm still expecting a good time. Then another one I still have no plans to read, but like I really, I wanna read it so bad, is Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. If you watch my first video of the year where I was trying to find a five star book for my first book of the year, which I succeeded in, this was another one of the options and it didn't end up winning, but I did really, really like the first chapter of this because in that video, I read all the first chapters and picked one. We're following these two wives, one who I think has come back from like this deep sea mission of some sort and has come back really changed and is a different person, is distant, emotional. The writing in this, I remember, I mean, I read the first chapter and it was like eight pages or whatever, a long time ago, half a year ago now. But I remember the writing feeling very like claustrophobic and very tight and very close. And it was a, it was such an interesting writing style that I hadn't necessarily read in a long time. So I'm really excited to read a whole book of that. I've heard such wonderful things from pretty much everyone who has read this. So I just, I need to get to it guys. So in any video that I can, we're gonna try and get to it. Then the final book I do have plans to read, and it's actually because I'm reading it now, I'm only 30 pages in, is The Inigami Curse by Sashi Yokomizo. So I read The Honjin Murders, here she is, hang on. The Honjin Murders by Sashi Yokomizo. It was much smaller. <laughs> this one's much smaller. Well, guess what people? I get excited about small things. A while ago now, and I've since been collecting all of the new releases of these books because these are classic Japanese uh, murder mysteries that are slowly being translated into English with these gorgeous covers. Hang on, let me show you the other ones. These are the other two I have. I think maybe there's one more out already, but we've got The Village of Eight Graves and we've got Death on Gokuman Island. I mean, look at these covers, aren't they incredible? But yeah, I read that and I've wanted to get to more, hence me, being <laughs> me collecting them all. And now it's finally time to read another one. This one we've got the wealthy head of this family dies and they're kind of the family, it's a rich family and they're like waiting to read the will but then death like murders start happening. I think they're trying to like kill each other off so that they can get the inheritance or something. Like I said, I'm only 30 pages in. I've barely read anything. I'm excited to read more of these. I love reading like murder mysteries from different cultures and seeing the different tropes and seeing the different kind of like ways in which the story is traditionally told. So yeah, you'll see this hopefully this weekend in a vlog. And then the last book that I don't have set plans to read but would really like to get round to is Finley Donovan Knocks Some Dead. So I read Finley Donovan Is Killing It, Where Is She? I'm still so mad that they're, the paperbacks are different sizes. Like this is just, like what is going on? That's so upsetting. Finny Donovan's Killing It, I read earlier this year. I loved it, it was five stars. We always knew it was gonna be five stars. And so I'd really like to continue on in the series in the next couple of months. These are just so fun. Like they're such fun murder mysteries. Finny Donovan's Killing It is definitely gonna be a book I give to my mum soon. Cause she's whispering about starting mysteries again. If you don't know, I used to always share my books with my mum. We chat about them. And in the past couple of years, she's only wanna read romance. Cause like some stuff has been happening in our lives behind the scenes that have been tough. So she's only wanting to read like happy books, romances. And I don't really read that. So we haven't been sharing books together, but she's whispering about being able to start reading other stuff. So I'm thinking Finny Donovan will be an early pick. Cause it's still kind of happy. Kind of, even though there's murders, like it's still, it's still kind of happy. So yeah, I would love to make progress. I don't really, oh no, I do know what the plot this is, but I can't tell you because it would spoil stuff from the first book. But yeah, really excited to continue on. Hopefully we will do soon. So there we have it. That is my summer TBR, half books that I have plans to read, half books that I am just excited to read <laughs> and would like to get around to some of the books that I'm putting as like priority for me right now. So yeah, let me know what you thought of any of these books if you read them. I would love to know, have any of you read Yellow Face yet? Have any of you read The Writing Retreat? Have any of you read Throwback? I would love to know any of your thoughts and let me know what is on your summer TBR because I wanna live vicariously through you. Cause like I said, I wanna read 40,000 books a year. Why is that not possible? 
Why is that not possible? Like, I am constrained by my mortal body and it's not fair. <laughs> if you got into the end of the video, comment the eyes looking, like the eyes looking emoji for yellow face because I could just read this right now. If I was living my best life, I would just go sit in the garden and read the whole thing right now, but that's not, that's not happening right now. So anyways, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye.